Hi, welcome to another lesson, or uh, just mainly a demonstration of code or whatever. I'm calling them lesson sets, just so we can keep a number on it. Um, so now I'm going to talk about reading an unknown number of inputs. We have some numbers in the series before. A logical extension of this is to ask the user to input a range of numbers. If we sum each and every number until there are no numbers to print on, on print, sorry, until there are no more numbers and print that to the screen, or while, uh, the, the while would execute until um, we encounter end of file. Um, so this is some code. We have two input values, <coughs> sum and value. That's on this, this line here. Um, both initialized to zero. That's You can see the zero is a value that, that the initializing value, and that's assigned to sum, and the same with value. Um, so in, inside the region of memory that uh, these variable names are associated with, sum and value is stored, the, the binary the the binary code that represents the integer value of zero because it's an int and iteration number which is this one here um just helps us take a certain number of inputs from the user because we haven't got to the stage of reading information from files so we can't use end of file functions yet um, obviously when you're uh, when you're reading a file um, <clears throat> so let's say it's a game engine and you've set a uh, user saved out a file uh, the, the code basis the, the logic inside the game engine looks at the file and reads uh, all the data required to set up those scenes um, each time the scene's loaded into memory. Um, but this is more simple stuff. Um, you get to that level eventually, but in order to understand how C++ works, you have to uh, learn it from the bottom up, really, the ground up, build, it, build your knowledge base from the ground up. You shouldn't be taking the top-down view of the world uh, too young. Um, so uh, we we read the data using STDCN and store it in value. So um, um, w when you run through the program, it says enter a number. Um, iteration number. So enter number, um, first first time round it's one, so enter number one, and then you enter one in, and uh, the, the one that's taken from C in is stored in value. Then we use compound assignment operator to add the current value to the evolving sum. That's this bit here. So let's say you, you um, enter the number five, Sum the first time round is zero, so five gets um, added to sum. So zero plus five is five, and that gets assigned to sum. So then sum becomes five. Um, uh, and we'll, we'll demonstrate that in a minute. Um, we, we then add one to iteration number. So um, obviously um, one value's already gone in. So iteration number gets iterated from 1 to 2 and then we enter value 2 up here and we do it up to 5 times once uh, it starts off at 1 it goes to 2, 3, 4, 5 once it's at 6 iteration number 6 is 6 less than or equal to 5 answer for that is no so we exit the while loop and do this bit here um so that's when all five numbers have been entered we exit the while loop and print the sum of them 
So let's just test it now. Um, this code here we don't need because that's just if you're on the Windows platform. Uh, but we'll actually put a SCD endl there and build that. We'll just go straight through to run because when you hit, you, well, you can do build, build succeeded, and then product run. Um, so it's it's going to ask for five numbers, and to be fair, I think we'll uh, sum the numbers one through to five, and we could start with five. So we'll do five, four, three, two, one, and most of you will know be able to calculate that really quickly before the answer comes out. 15 because 5 plus 4 is 9 plus 3 is 12 plus 2 is 14 plus 1 is 15 and that's what you get so um, now we need to look at the if statement again um, so let's bring up some more code I'll just be a second I'm going to go grab that um, Command A and paste this code in. I'm I'm just getting this code off of a Perthal server, but I've got code dotted all over the place, and I'll be able to bring code in and show it. And I'm always referring to old code to see how I did something. Um, most people keep their code in a repository online, so it's like an archive of code bases. And when you get into using version control and building seriously complex game engines or uh, operating systems, everything's uh, done with version control. And you're constantly uh, updating, modifying code, and looking at old code and seeing how you can solve new problems and create new tools for a game engine, anything like that. Uh, so, product, build. Um, right, let's, let's explain this. Um, so this program highlights how the if statement um, supports conditional execution. We can use an if to write pro to write a program to count how many consecutive times each distinct value appears in the input. That's what this does. So um, std uh, c in, um, and then the two right angle brackets curve val, the, this bit here, um, let's just highlight it, um, ensures that the input is not empty. Um, like a while and if evaluates a condition, a value is read into curveval and if succeeds a condition is true and we start with the block of logic after the curly braces. So um, obviously it's it's looking for a it's assigning um whatever's put into the input um into val and because up here val is assigned to zero, which is an integer, and it's actually um, declared as an integer is val. It's looking for an integer as input. So let's say if you put a letter, that's not going to work, and this block of logic here is not going to execute um, this bit here. Um, so um, next bit is count. Um, this this count, which is assigned to one, uh, sorry, one has been assigned to count, will count how often each distinct number occurs. The while loop, that's this, um, in fact, the whole thing, um, um, the, um, the while loop re repeatedly reads values from the standard input. Um, unless um, 
um, let's have a look. Uh, this bit here, um, if um, the con this condition in this if uses equality operator, that's the um, this here. It's not assignment. It's equality. So if there's two um, equals operators, we're testing if the value y is equal to 10, like in maths, is one side of the equation equal to the other? Um, so is y 10? If it is 10, break and come out of, uh, um, of this while loop and go straight to the end here, because it means 10 values have already been read in um, from to the system from the user. Um, <sighs> if we have seen curve R once more, then count then count gets incremented. So um, now now we're talking about this if here um, val which is what's read in uh, from the system. If it's equal to the previous number, then count gets iterated. So you might be able to see what's going on here. Let's say the number three has been read from, from the input line. And um, we, we've already gone past this. So we might have put a couple of numbers in there already, two or three or four or whatever, but it's not got it's not gone over ten yet. So now we're testing. Um, let's say three has already been put in. Um, that's current value, and the, the next value that's been read in is also three. If that's true, like two threes in a row, then um, add one to count. And obviously this is a, a prefix plus plus um, saying, will you add one to count? Um, and um, so um, if evaluating the condition returns false, um, this bit, so um, let's say um the uh, value taken into the input is three and the next time round you you put a four then th this count doesn't get incremented and this else um this else um is the the functionality that gets invoked um so <clears throat> If evaluating the condition returns false, the program counter drops down to the statements following the else, which is uh, these three here, and of which, um, um, well, this block contains an output and two assignments. This is the output, and these are the two assignments. Um, the output, obviously, I'm, I'm looking at my notes. Uh, sometimes I won't do that. I'll just explain it. Um, using my own words on the fly, uh, dynamically, <laughs> whatever. Um, <clears throat> the block contains um, an output and two assignments. Uh, th this output here prints the count for the value we have just been considering. So um, let's say um, let's say the number three has been entered twice, but the third time around, the user enters four. So three has been entered twice. So um, see how, th I'll say three occurs, count will be two, and then it'll say times. So three occurs two times, and L. And um, the assignment, the assignments here, um, reset the count to one and puts a number we have just 
um, red curve valve. Uh, sorry, let me explain that. Um, um, so four has gone in, and that's sent to set to, assigned to curve valve. But because four has only been entered once after the two threes, um, count is set back to one. So uh, we've only read one new value, one new integer value, namely four. And let's say the, the user enters four um, a further five times in a row and then enters a six. Then however many times um, the number four has been entered, it will say four occurs this many times. Of course, only up to um, the, this 10, um, 10 values are taken in. And obviously, when, when y does equal 10, we break. And this break takes you out of this while loop here and down to the bottom where it does the same thing as this here, just once more before the program exits. And this isn't important, but um, it'll come down here and it'll return whatever that is. So um, the question is, um, if um, all the input values are equal, um, what will it do? Um, you know, just to, to ask a question, Compile and run the program from, from this program here um, with so, uh, giving it only equal values as input. So let's say um, the number six ten times in a row, what will it do? And also try running it again, uh, giving uh, values when no number is repeated. So let's say you want to type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You know, every integer value there is different. What will the program do? So, um, uh, if all the input values are equal, uh, the answer to that is it, uh, it will print, um, let's say, 4 occurs 10 times. And if no duplicate, if there's no duplicated values, it it, it will say um, this value, let's say it's a, a seven, occurs one time for each. So, um, so one occurs one time, two occurs one time, three occurs one times, four occurs one times, five occurs one times, um, up to a, a total of 10 different values. And let's test that. Um, so go product, run um and start typing in numbers now it's not doing anything but i've gone down down here put my cursor in there and i'm going to start typing stuff and you won't see anything to start off with let's start we're, we're, this time we're making uh, all the values the same so three three so two one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 3 occurs 10 times. And the reason we had to put 11 values in because uh, the last time around it took a value, the 11th time we typed 3, um, and it said, okay, y is already equal to 10, so we break out, but we, we put that extra value in, and that's where it printed this bit here. Um, 3 occurs 10 times. So, um, obviously, um, you, you can get logic to do exactly what you want it to, but, um, you know, just constantly hacking and bodging your way to a solution. Um, so let, let's do the numbers uh, 1 through 10, uh, where each value is different. So we'll, we'll do a 1, we'll do a 2, we'll do a 3. And like I said before, it will say... 
uh, one occurs one times two occurs one times three occurs one times like that so one so this time we type two we're immediately going to get feedback on that one one occurs one times so three four five six seven eight nine ten and eleven because that that that's like before you have to do the eleventh time so that y is equivalent of ten and it, you get the break to take you out of the while loop and you can see um here um we get four occurs one time five occurs one time six occurs one time seven occurs one time so um it repeats that every time um uh right so so we've demonstrated that and uh what what we should do finally uh which wasn't on the plan originally but let's say um 42 um the answer to the ultimate question let's try this 42 42 42 3 4 we'll type it five times but this time um we'll then start changing it to 55 42 occurs five times let's type 55 in twice and then change it to 62 so what do you think is going to happen it's going to say 55 occurs two times 55 occurs two times um 62 we'll just put that in once so next we'll put 100 it's going to say 62 occurs one time and then we'll try um a further two into the values of 100. 100 occurs two times. That because the, the 11th value that we input, namely the third 100 there in the list, um, that input was required so that uh, y, equal, y had an equivalent value of 10 so that the break could occur, which took you out here. So it still only said, 100 occurred two times because it, it never got chance to add one to count for the third uh, 100 in the list. Anyway, that's that. So I'm uh, going to bring some more code up now. Um, let's just take, check the uh, timing on this video so far. 22 minutes, cool. Um, <sighs> All right, now I've, I've got the uh, code in the clipboard, so Command A, Command V, some more code there. And those two are from back in the days of coding all this up on uh, uh, the Windows platform, but now I'm on its code on the Mac, so it's a bit different. Uh, build, product, build. Um, so now we're going to revise some work we did before um, this time we want our program to handle input in which the first number is smaller than the second in order to get the numbers in a range summed up we need to enter two values and check whether the first value is smaller than the second I'll explain how this happens so um, um, we, we've got uh, some integers here um, with, with variables. Variables just means um, we've got a name for something and we can um, assign anything we want as long as it's an integer. So the fact that it's variable just means, you know, um, a one, a zero could be assigned a one, a two, a three, a four. That's variable because we can ins uh, we can assign many different values. That, that's where the word variable comes from. Um, you know, a variable different amount of values can be assigned to this. So uh, we we've got um, uh, three inter three um, integers here: val one, val two, and sum. Um, and we want to enter a low number and we want to enter a high number. But how does the logic check whether uh, the first 
number entered is definitely lower than the second. Uh, we use the if, so um, let's say a value of 4 is entered when it says enter a low number, and a value of 6 is entered when we say enter a high number. Um, if 4 is less than 6, then execute um, this logic. Let the program counter come down here and work through this. Um, if not, go to the end of this block of logic and just do the else and say um, uh, the first value is not less than the second. Uh, so we'll test that, but um, what the logic also does is it sums everything up in the range, so 4 to 6, so 4 is less than 6, it comes down here. Uh, the sum of 4, that's value 1, to 6 is, and then we do the logic to um, actually um, work that out. So um, 4 less than or equal to 6, true, sum plus equals value 1. So the sum starts at zero. The first value that goes in is four, while four is less than or equal to six. True. So uh, sum starts at zero. Um, the first value, a val one, is four. So zero plus four is four, and that's then assigned to sum. So sum is now. Um, you you can actually watch. Um, these things um, with a program counter, which I might get um, to doing later on down the road because I want to be able to see uh, people see the program counter stepping through this logic and uh, updating um, all these values that are stored inside memory because that's what's happening under the hood with the engine. Um, and I'll definitely get around to showing that. Um, but just believe me for now that, um, let's say the second time around, um, val would have been iterated here because uh, plus plus val one, it was four. The next time around it's five. So five is less than or equal to six, true. So um, val one is now five and some already starts four. So you're talking about four plus five, which is nine, and then nine is stored in sum. So, uh, and the last value would be um, six. So when val one equals six, val one, six is less than or equal to six, still true. So nine plus six is 15, and that's stored in sum. So uh, sum is now 15, but uh, the next time around, um, we've, we've iterated val1 again, so val1 now equals 7. Um, so 7 is less than or equal to 6, that's false, so that's when we get the exit clause. And uh, um, uh, we print the sum, which uh, we all know is 15, because uh, 4 plus 5 is 9, plus 6 is 15. Let's try it. Um, run product run, enter a low number, 4, 6, the sum of 4 to 6 is 15. Now let, let's uh, run it again and uh, put in, whoops, stop, um, will it succeed? Yeah. Uh, let's put in um, 6 and then we're saying that um, put the 4 in, this time around I'll press enter in a second. We're going to see that um, up here, um, file one is six. Is six less than four? Um, the answer to that is uh, false. No, no, six is not less than four. So therefore, don't um, don't let the program counter drop down into this logic and start um, evaluating these expressions. Just go to the else and say um, val1, which is 6, 6 is not less than 4. Alright, enter. 6 is not less than 4. 
And um, that brings me to the end of uh, another uh, little uh, bit of explanation of uh, program flow and stuff like that. Um, I think um, it's definitely going to be a good thing to somehow, um, I think I was better at it on the Windows platform because that's what I'd use to write all this code, but... um, Ultimately, when you've got the debugger out and you've got the uh, program counter uh, moving through the blocks of logic, and uh, you can see, you can start seeing it jump about between different files uh, as different functions are called and uh, expressions and statements start being evaluated, and um, new values are assigned to different regions of memory, and that um, ultimately enables the uh, uh, pixel shading data or the audio data or anything like that to update the, how it's been rendered um, uh, to the user which is ultimately what a video game is and when you can start watching all those values change inside memory based on uh, the program kind of moving through the, uh, uh, the the logic and doing doing its thing that's when it starts to get interesting but I'd have to um, see how the debugger works in uh, Xcode before I can show that, but I'll definitely get around to showing that. Um, Anyway, uh, 31 minutes. Thanks for listening. Bye.